Ever since the attack on the World Trade Center, airports have been a front line in anti-terrorist police activity in the UK. A piece of legislation called Schedule 7 enables the police to stop anyone coming or going through immigration and question them under the Terrorism Act. The detail of these conversations never normally comes out, but this recording offers an insight into what seems to go on behind the scenes. And the people I meet have met rapists, uh, people that have dragged girls and found a back of McDonald's and mm -hmm. raped them. And now they're walking around with a big full beard and up mm -hmm. in a long white yeah. flowing robe telling everybody that they're jihadis. The man who recorded this did so, he says, because he was sick of being stopped, even though there's nothing in his life of any interest to anti-terrorism police. I've got a man sitting in front of me talking about um, associating black people with, uh, with rape, with uh, violence and putting knives in the backs of people. So it does... And with Islam. Yeah, and someone, it does worry me. With someone who has this power and responsibility, who's um, looking after national security. The anti-terrorism officer also asked some questions about British foreign policy. The Americans, uh, British, of course, in mm. Afghanistan. Do you think that's justified? It really does upset me a lot because, I mean, I was, I was born here and I have a British passport. And com seeing people with European passports walk straight through and I'm there and I get stopped. Um, from a long flight, I get stopped for, like, sometimes three, four hours. And I'm not allowed home, basically. I'm, I'm not allowed to see my family. The government's had guidance that many Muslims find this sort of thing offensive but their independent legal advisor insists Schedule 7 is a useful tool. If you look at the uh, numbers of people who are charged with terrorist offences, the number of terrorist prisoners there are in the UK, I'm afraid there as well there is uh, a predominance of Asian people. So what the police would tell you is um, that what they are doing is proportionate not perhaps to the population as a whole, but to the risk. The Home Office points out that in the three years up to 2012, there were 12 significant convictions of people on terrorism offences who'd been stopped under Schedule 7. But that's out of an overall total of some 230,000 people who were stopped. And that's why campaigners against Schedule 7 say far too many innocent people are being caught in the net. The campaign group CAGE says it's had endless Muslims coming and complaining about a similar experience. They've had their phones taken and the contents inspected. It is demanding the legislation is revoked. Various, you know, organisations and people have tried over this time to to um, correct this. Right? They've asked um, in the beginning. I think they simply asked for safeguards. You know, things like, you know, can we have um, can can the reasonable suspicion clause be added? Um, can we collect um, details about the faith of people stopped? Um, can we record stops? But, you know, this has been, you know, they've been asking for this for years, but it's been kind of ignored. So I think at this stage, we have to say now that Schedule 7 needs to be repealed. There is a debate in government about whether Schedule 7 might be made less confrontational, but as yet nothing's changed. Certainly stopping innocent people in a way which they may find intimidating seems unlikely to win many hearts and minds. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera, London.